Hey guys, uh, welcome to Interview Nest. So today's interview question is, uh, is a given number prime number or not? Interviewer would ask this question to gauge your math ability, your logic skills, and obviously your algorithm. Don't just go and rush to write the solution and finish it. I want you to do a thinking process. So uh, you need to explain to your interviewer what is a prime number then you want him to take it to a simple ex simple algorithm and then improve it uh, to make it better so then he would understand that okay you know the process you know compared to if you just go and do it then it looks like you memorize the whole thing and you don't get that good impression all right so let's first determine what is a prime number a prime number is a number um, that can have only two factors itself and number one. So is zero a prime number? No. Well, it, it gets it's gets quite complex, right, when it comes to zero. So we're going to say zero is not a prime number. All right. Is one a prime number? Uh, no, because you can divide one by itself and one, but they're both the same number. So it's not a prime number. It has to be another number besides one. And I did not create this definition. Some mathematician did. So I don't know. All right. So is two a prime number? Yes, because two can be divided by one and two, but nothing more than that. So it has two factors. So yes, it's a prime number. The numbers uh, that you, has more than two factors are called composite numbers, okay? Just to let you know. Um, is three a prime number? Yes, because you can do one and three, uh, but nothing more than that. Is four a prime number? You can divide it by one, two, and four. It's not a prime number, okay? All the even numbers you can divide them by 2 so 2 is one of the factors in all the even numbers except 2 all other even numbers are not prime we're not gonna go further than this because now it's become uh, more systematic so the first few numbers we need to be careful about okay so here we already know this fact that 0 and 1 are not prime and we also know that 2 is a prime all other even numbers are not prime okay so we need to remember this two fact before we we do this okay all right so let's write our function so i'm gonna say let is prime let's write a an arrow function always try to impress your interviewer but by, by using latest syntax but you need to know exactly what it does uh, don't if you don't know how it works <laughs> you can get in trouble okay okay so now it has a number as an argument or it could be a number or a string also doesn't matter uh, we have to cover for that case as well so what I'm gonna do is yes we need to cover uh, this too so we can do that but let's since 2 is the only prime number I want to cover it first so I can say if my n equal to 2 then I can return uh, true very simple uh, remember to use triple equal sign because it checks the value and the type as well now the second thing we want to cover is this right so I can say uh, if n is less than 2 then I want to return uh, false which means it's not a prime number but before that I can also cover for anything if a user enters any kind of garbage like uh, null undefined strings boolean whatever right I need to cover that so I can in JavaScript there is a function called is integer and it's in the library of numbers so if I can say not number dot is integer n then it's not a prime number right so I can just return false in that sense also what I can do is here this condition all even numbers are not prime since we are doing this let's cover it before we start uh, building a loop so how do I do that so I can say not uh, and if I get a remainder zero remainder uh, from 2 then then it's not a prime number right so then all the even numbers I can cover it here so we so far we covered this two lines let's cover rest of the numbers so we already know we covered up to two, so we have to start from three. So let's write a for loop. I mean, I can do, I can write a, a while loop, but uh, um, to explain viewers, I think for loop is better to explain. But in in practical, when you use it, use while loop more. Now let's understand this, right? So for a given number, uh, what you want to do is 
you want to start from basically two. But here we're starting from three because of the good reason, right? But you want to start from two until uh, you reach n minus one. Remember, you can still divide n by n, right? Without getting any remainder. So we we want to exclude n. We also want to exclude one. So two to n minus one. But here we're going to do three to n minus one, right? Since we already covered two. So let's do that. So I can say if less than equal to n minus one and i plus plus oh here i forgot i should not say integer i should let all right that's why i was giving all this weird errors all right so now what we want to do is now we want to divide n by all these numbers and let's say if one of those numbers when i divide it gives a zero remainder that means it's not a prime number okay and if I go all the way, and if I can't find any number that I divide by and getting a zero a remainder, then I know it's not a prime number. So the logic is pretty simple. Uh, so I would say if n divided by i, so this is a remainder for in JavaScript, uh, if, it's, if it's equal to zero, we already know it's not a prime number. So we can simply return false here right and once the whole for loop ends and everything is checked if we still haven't found then we can simply say return true so the algorithm is, is uh, pretty simple now let's check it so what I can do is I can actually write a for loop uh, let i equal to uh, 0 uh, to i less than, let's say, 30 to see what's, what our prime numbers are not, and i plus plus. Okay, and if is prime i, if it's a prime number, then I want to print it. So I can say console log i, okay. And it's going to print all the prime numbers between 0 and 30. So let's run this. All right, so we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. We already know these are prime numbers. So we know our algorithm really works. And this is how it works. Now let's improve this. It has to check for every number. It has to check pretty much n times to, to see if it's a prime number or not. If I put 100, right? How many times it will check in the for loop, right? So for that, I can just add a counter here. So I can say uh, let CTR, this is a counter equal to zero. And uh, then inside here, I can increment the counter uh, plus plus. So every time it goes in a for loop, which means we are checking that number. And at the end of the we need to do it here. So let's say if it finds it, then we need to console log. I can say it's counter is uh, CTR, right? Then it would say, oh, okay, it's a, it went 30 times or whatnot. All right, so in, instead of 100, let's put 101, which is not an even number. Because what happens if it's an even number, then it would exit here because you don't, you're not even checking for anything, right? So we already know that for even number, it's quick and you don't need to compare anything. But for non-even number, when I run this, um, I'm getting 98. So for 101, it uh, goes up to 98. It has to check 98 times to see if it's. So we need to improve this, right? So one thing we could do, since we are uh, ignoring all the even numbers, uh, we don't have to go check all the even numbers here. So here I can add another i++. plus plus. So what it would do, it would take 3, and instead of incrementing 1 every time, it would increment 2 more. So it would go 3, 5, 7, like that, okay? So let me clear this and now run this. All right, so for 101, it's checking 49 times, so half of it right half of around half the numbers uh, this is still big uh, can we do something more 
Okay, so in order to do more, we need to look at some math. All right, so I'm going to do some math here in the front. Let's look at it. Okay, so if I have a number, n, which is made of two factors, right? Uh, x and y. Now, what is a possibility that, that this x and y could be? Either they could be equal or one is less than the other, right? So we can simply say here that uh, x is, let's say, less than equal to y. And if I multiply both x on each side, and we're going to look at it in numbers as well, but let's just do it in mathematics. Okay, so if I multiply both by x on each side, we already know that here uh, x multiplied by y is what n, right, based on here. So x square is going to be less than n. x is going to be less than equal to uh, square root of n, right? So we will never hit a number that is a factor that is over the square root of n, okay? So we already know that. For example, uh, let's look at 6, right? So 6 is what? You can have 1 multiplied by 6, or you can have um, 2 multiplied by 3, or you can have 3 multiplied by 2, right? Because, and then in the end, we can have uh, 6 multiply by 1. It's the same thing. So this is repeating, right? All we have to check is that the smallest one, right? Because then it would repeat itself. So we don't need that. So the smallest one, which is 1 and 2, it's always going to be lower than square root of uh, 6, right? So square root of 6 is what? Is a little over 2. So it's this is less than 2. So we really don't need a number here to do n. So to do square root, we can do math dot sqrt n. You can actually floor this also if you want to, so that you know you you might have to do one more check. But let's let's run this. All right. So n one, we only have to check four times, which is quite impressive. What if you have something like this, right? A very large number. Let's run this. Only nine times. Well. It probably figure out at some point because it's divided by some number. So, but anyway, you can you can see how before it would be like uh, you know n minus one of these numbers, so which would be quite high. So this is quite useful. So this is the algorithm. By the way, I'll put this algorithm on my Git side, and so you can check it out from there. Uh, look at the download it from there. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you did, please like. Uh, don't forget to like. Um, like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. And thank you.